Ever wondered if the Bible really is against women? A question that has sparked countless debates and discussions over the centuries. The notion has been ingrained in the minds of many, but where did it actually originate from? And more importantly, is there any truth to it? This myth, like many others, has roots that are deeply embedded in a complex web of history, interpretation, and cultural context. It's important to remember that the Bible, a sacred text revered by billions, was written in a time and place far removed from our own. The writers of the Bible lived in societies vastly different from ours, with unique social norms and structures. In unraveling this myth, we must first recognize the socio-cultural context of the era in which these scriptures were penned. The roles of men and women, and the societal expectations of each, were starkly different from what we know today. Hence, to apply modern standards and interpretations to these ancient texts could lead to misunderstandings and misconceptions. The Bible, in its essence, is a collection of stories, laws, poetry, and prophecies. It's a reflection of the human experience, encapsulating the struggles, triumphs, and spiritual journeys of people from diverse walks of life. So, does it really stand against women, or has it been misinterpreted and misrepresented over the years? As we delve into this discussion, it's crucial to approach it with an open mind, ready to challenge preconceived notions and willing to explore different perspectives. This isn't just about debunking a myth, it's about understanding the true essence of a text that has shaped civilizations and influenced cultures across the globe. The Old Testament, a collection of ancient texts, is often misinterpreted. Now let's delve into the vibrant roles of women within its pages. It's quite illuminating to see these women, not as mere footnotes, but as central characters in many of the Old Testament's key narratives. Take Deborah, for instance. She was more than just a woman in the Old Testament, she was a respected judge and a prophetess. Her story, found in the Book of Judges, is a tale of strength and leadership. She led the Israelites to victory against their oppressors, and her wisdom and courage were revered by her people. Deborah was a beacon of light in a time of darkness. She was not confined by the societal norms but was a respected authority figure held in high esteem. Then there's Ruth, whose story is a testament to loyalty and love. Her unwavering devotion to her mother-in-law Naomi, even in the face of great personal loss, is a powerful narrative of steadfastness and commitment. Ruth's story isn't just about loyalty, it's also about bravery. She was a Moabite, a foreigner in Israel, yet she chose to stay with Naomi, adopting her faith and her people as her own. Her courage and resolve were rewarded when she became the great-grandmother of King David, establishing a lineage that would lead to the birth of Jesus Christ. These remarkable women, among many others, were respected and revered. They were leaders, prophetesses, and heroines. Their stories are woven into the fabric of the Old Testament, each thread contributing to the rich tapestry of faith, resilience, and devotion. So, it's clear that the Old Testament isn't just a chronicle of men and their deeds, it's a narrative that also celebrates women, their strength, their wisdom, and their indomitable spirit. These women were not just spectators but active participants in the unfolding of God's plan. The Old Testament, it seems, is not as patriarchal as it is often perceived. Moving on to the New Testament, does the perception change? Let's dive into the narrative. The New Testament paints an even more vivid picture of women's importance, challenging the myth that the Bible is against women. Take for example Mary Magdalene, a woman whose name is known worldwide. Often misunderstood and misrepresented, Mary Magdalene was, in fact, a significant disciple of Jesus. She was a woman of influence and substance, a faithful follower who stayed by Jesus' side even when others fled. Then, there's Phoebe, a name perhaps less known but no less important. Phoebe was a deaconess in the early church. Her role was not one of silent submission but of active service and leadership. She was a mentor, a helper, and a patron of many, including the Apostle Paul himself. These women and many others in the New Testament were not just bystanders in the unfolding story of the early church. They were active participants, leaders, and influencers. They were respected and treated as equals, their voices heard, their contributions valued. From Mary, the mother of Jesus, who showed incredible faith and courage, to Lydia, a successful businesswoman who became a key figure in the early Christian community, women played vital roles in the New Testament. They were visionaries, missionaries, and even apostles. They were not confined to the shadows, but stood in the forefront, shaping the course of events. So, when we examine the New Testament, we see a far cry from the notion that the Bible is against women. 
Instead, we encounter a narrative where women are integral, where they lead, serve, and make a difference. We see a testament that values women, that celebrates their worth, their strength, and their faith. The New Testament, therefore, tells a story of equality and respect, a narrative where women are not merely present, but pivotal. It's a story that recognizes the vital role women play in faith and community. New Testament too then appears to be far from being against women. But what about those verses that seem to suggest otherwise, you might ask? It's a valid question and one that deserves a thoughtful response. There are indeed certain passages in the Bible that, when taken out of context, could be misconstrued as demeaning or diminishing women. However, the truth is far from that. Let's take for instance the verse in the first letter of Paul to Timothy, where he says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man, she must be quiet. Now, on the surface, it may seem like a harsh statement, but let's delve a little deeper. This verse was written in a specific context at a time when the church of Ephesus, to which Timothy belonged, was dealing with false teachings and heresies. The women in question were new converts from pagan religions, and they lacked a proper understanding of Christian doctrine. Paul's advice was not meant to silence all women for all time, but rather to maintain order and prevent the spread of false teachings within that specific community. Another often misinterpreted verse is found in the book of Ephesians, where Paul says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. This verse is often taken out of context and used to justify male dominance. However, if we read the following verse it says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This signifies a mutual submission out of love and respect, not a hierarchy of value. So we see that these verses, when understood in their historical and cultural context, actually uphold the dignity and worth of women rather than demean them. They were written for specific situations and should not be generalized or taken out of context. Misinterpretation can easily lead to misconception. It's crucial to approach the Bible with an open mind and a willingness to understand the context in which it was written. Context, it seems, is key to understanding these verses. So, what's the final verdict? Let's take a moment to revisit the points we've discussed throughout this journey. First, we began with the Old Testament, where we found numerous examples of strong, influential women. Women like Ruth, whose loyalty and perseverance still inspire us today. And Esther, who put her life on the line to save her people. These women were not oppressed or undervalued. Instead, they were cherished and respected, playing vital roles in their societies and in God's divine plan. We then moved to the New Testament, where we saw the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. He interacted with women in a way that was revolutionary for his time. He treated women with utmost respect, disregarding societal norms that considered women as lesser beings. Women were the first to witness his resurrection, a privilege that speaks volumes about their worth in his eyes. We also addressed the common misinterpretations and misconceptions that often lead to the notion that the Bible is against women. We debunked these misunderstandings by putting them in their proper socio-cultural context. We saw that the Bible's teachings on women were progressive for their time, emphasizing their value and worth in a society that often overlooked them. The Bible, when understood holistically, respects and values women. It tells stories of their strength, courage, and wisdom. It teaches us that in God's eyes, everyone is valuable. It's crucial to remember that the Bible is a product of its time, written in a context vastly different from ours. We should interpret its teachings in light of this context, not imposing our modern-day perspectives onto it. In the end, the Bible is not against women. It's about time we debunk this myth once and for all. Remember, in God's eyes, all are equal. Having debunked the myth that the Bible is against women, we hope you've gained a fresh perspective on the role and value of women in both the Old and New Testaments. The Bible counts more than 180 women by name and numerous others whose names remain unknown. These women were leaders, prophetesses, mothers, and daughters, each contributing to the overarching narrative of strength, faith, and resilience. Did you know that the first person to declare Jesus as the Messiah was a woman? Or that the longest recorded conversation Jesus ever had was with a woman? These instances underscore the significant roles women played in biblical times. We encourage you to delve deeper into the scriptures, to explore and understand the context and true meaning of the verses. Read about the women in the Bible, understand their struggles, their triumphs, and their faith. See how they were valued and respected and how their stories continue to inspire us today.
The Bible is a rich tapestry of narratives that can teach us a lot about equality, respect, and love. It's an ancient text that was revolutionary in its time, breaking boundaries and challenging societal norms. In the words of Galatians 3.28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. In God's eyes we are all equal, cherished and loved. If you found this video enlightening, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Let's continue this journey of exploration and understanding together. Remember, in the grand narrative of the Bible, every voice matters, every story counts, and every individual, regardless of their gender, plays a crucial part in God's divine plan. Let's delve deeper, shall we? As we unravel some intriguing facts from the Bible that further debunk the myth that it's against women. First, let's take a journey to the Book of Romans, specifically Romans 16, 7. Here, a woman named Junia is referred to as outstanding among the apostles. Yes, you heard that right. A woman was recognized as an apostle, a role of significant leadership and influence. Next, we journey to the moment of Jesus' resurrection. Picture the scene. The first rays of the sun are peeking over the horizon. The air is filled with uncertainty and sorrow. Then suddenly, hope is reborn. And who was the first to witness this miracle? It was a woman, Mary Magdalene, who first saw Jesus after his resurrection. She was the first to bear the good news, becoming, in essence, the first evangelist. Finally, let's turn the pages to the longest recorded conversation Jesus had in the Bible. It wasn't with his disciples, it wasn't with the Pharisees, but with a woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. This conversation was not just polite chit-chat, it was a profound dialogue about worship, salvation, and truth. These facts further highlight the significant roles women played in the Bible, challenging the misconception that it's against women. The Bible, with its rich tapestry of narratives, offers a unique lens through which we can understand the past and glean insights for the present. Stay tuned for more enlightening content. Remember, every story counts, every voice matters, and every individual, regardless of their gender, plays a crucial part in God's divine plan.